Hey there guys, so on this channel I dive into all sorts of different aspects of fitness and performance and talk about the benefits of combining them instead of focusing on just one modality. One of the questions I get most often though is how can you incorporate all this into a workout and still have time for anything else? And the answer is that you're not just combining lots of different stuff all on top of each other, but rather you're kind of using exercises that bring multiple benefits, what I like to call bang for your buck exercises. And so in this video, I'm gonna break down a few different exercises, give you some practical things you can do to build strength and performance and endurance all at once in a very functional manner. Of course, every exercise has its place and I'm not saying some exercises are more functional than others, but if you want an exercise that gives you lots of different benefits all at once and an exercise that's gonna to transfer to things like athletic performance, martial arts and everyday health and mobility, then this little list should do you nicely. I've got other videos like this on the channel as well where I break down different exercises. So after you've watched this one, maybe go and check those out as well. And of course, if you want an entire program built around these kinds of movements and this kind of philosophy, then be sure to check out the link in the description that will take you to Super Functional Training, my ebook and training program. And there's a discount on right now whilst we're all in lockdown. Anyways, without further ado, here's my list. For this, you're going to take a cable or a band and then press it forwards on one side against resistance. And you're challenging the pushing muscles, the pecs, the triceps and the shoulders, but also the ability to brace the core. The press is an anti-rotational movement. The aim is to not let your body twist from side to side. Here you're standing with legs slightly apart, looking square ahead. The aim then is to push out whilst keeping your torso steady, pushing from a mechanically disadvantaged position, just as you might have to in real life. So the Atlas Swing is another exercise with an awesome name. This is a swing that travels horizontally across the body with a twisting motion. This builds impressive ballistic power in the core along the transverse plane. So you're going to take up a regular stance with the legs slightly bent and shoulder width apart. Grip the kettlebell handle in both hands and then swing to one side. Turn as you do to face that direction. The kettlebell should hang for a moment at the top of the movement. Now let it come back down in front of you like a pendulum. Twist at the waist and shift your weight onto the other foot as it reaches the apex on the other side. You want to really drive through the core here as you twist and swing the weight. And this is going to develop that twisting power that's so useful in so many different aspects of life and sports. So every kind of medicine ball slam is a fantastic ballistic exercise that requires you to exert sudden explosive force against the resistance provided by the medicine ball. And this lets you perform all sorts of movements that mimic things you might actually do, whether in daily life or on the field. In the case of a rotational slam, you're taking the ball and then you're throwing it against a wall or just into the distance by twisting and torquing the torso. You can do this throwing overhand like a shot putt, or you can sling it from the waist height. As a concentric only exercise, it's a great finisher. And of course, it also translates very nicely as a form of cardio and resistance cardio at that. Once again, this makes it a highly bang for your buck exercise. This will build the ability to explosively return energy from a single leg while stabilizing the hips. To perform this movement, you're going to keep one leg on the ground and the other raised in a bent position. Squat by bending the supporting leg, keeping the foot flat. And you're gonna bring the other leg backwards so that the shin is parallel with the ground. And you're gonna bring your free leg up and drive the knee into the air as you jump off of that one supporting leg. What's important here is not squatting low, but jumping high and forcefully. It's important to note that the aim is not to reach failure with single leg squat jumps. In fact, you should be stopping before you even reach technical failure because the risk of injury of this one as you get fatigued becomes extraordinarily high. This is also only an advanced move for people who really know what they're doing and have developed a lot of single leg strength and stability through other exercises. The problem is that using sprints in a workout regularly can increase your chance of injury. It's very high impact, and if you're going at top speed, it's very easy to trip over your own feet. 
going uphill reduces these risks because it allows you to put in 100% effort but not go at quite such a high speed. At the same time, that added resistance allows you to develop even more power. This also helps because you're increasing the rate of your stride. You're also bringing your knees up higher. And at the same time, this forces you to land on the balls of your feet, which can reduce injury. So running uphill basically is a way to add resistance to sprints, which is a fantastic way to make you faster. So I've talked about calf jumps in the past as a fantastic tool for building explosive strength in the calves, which can contribute to a better vertical jump. And at the same time, this is excellent for developing ankle stiffness, which is a very underappreciated aspect of athletic performance. A lot of athletic performance is about returning energy to the ground. As uh, JC Santana from Institute of Human Performance told me, rather than generating power yourself. It's, it's not about fast twitch. It's not about fast twitch because what transfers is almost an isometric contraction. Mm -hmm. So you go, okay, the first bridge is the, is the ankle. And that's the one that everybody misses because when you want to run fast, the first thing they do is leg pressing, squat, deadlifts. If you're a little bit more uh, advanced, you go into your single leg pumps and your single leg uh, squat uh, and that kind of stuff. If you're more progressive, uh, you go into understanding that the hamstrings pull and so you start doing your triple threat with, with the stability ball and all of that. But everybody misses the simplest thing to develop and the usually the biggest thing missing, especially at the low levels, which is ankle stiffness. Yeah. They go, well, how do you develop that? Dude, easy, easy. Single leg skip rope and you don't even need a skip rope. And that's where the ankle stiffness comes in. Using calf jumps is a great way to build this, but what's more useful is to try skipping on just one foot. But at the same time, this is a bang for your buck exercise because it also allows you to train things like coordination and of course, cardio. Do you have a rope? That's fine. You can actually perform one-legged skipping without even using a rope. Just pretend you've got one. You feel a little bit weird. But, who cares? So here you're going to pick up either a rock, a boulder or a log. Now you're going to get it into a racked position so that your arms are bent. Now you're going to push the weight upwards for reps. The benefit of using something like this rather than a barbell is that every rock and every boulder are different. This means that you'll need to adapt your grip and core stability every single time. You'll be easing the weight slightly more onto one side or the other side. You'll have to contort your body. This builds tough hands and hardy mentality. You can use other things like backpacks stuffed with weight or sandbags, or if you live near the woods, then ideal, just go for it. This is what Nikolai Bernstein refers to as repetition without repetition. And this can help us to build more robust mental models that store our motor movements. Basically, your mental model becomes more generalized so as to be applicable to more situations and thus more useful in the real world. So thanks for watching this one, guys. I hope you found it useful and interesting. If you did, then please share it around, leave a like, subscribe. All that stuff helps me immensely. I've got much more like this on the way, so stay tuned. Thanks so much for your support and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.